Hi everybody. We are continuing to read Where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Grace Lynn. We're reading it with permission from Little Brown and Company Publishers. And we are starting chapter two. We met Min Lee and her mother and father last week and they uh, are poor. And what else did you think about them? Pa told a story, not Pa, Ba told a story about um, the jade dragon. I think we'll hear another story today. Chapter 2. Every morning before the sun rose, Min Lee, her mother, and her father began work in the fields. It was planting season, which was especially grueling. The mud stuck to their feet like glue, and each seedling had to be painstakingly planted by hand. When the hot sun burned overhead, Min Lee's knees shook from weariness. She hated the feeling of thick, soggy mud on her hands and face, and many times she wanted to stop in irritation and exhaustion. But seeing her parents patiently working, backs bent, made her swallow her complaints and continue. As soon as the sun began to set, Min Lee's parents sent her home to make dinner and to rest while they continued to work in the thick mud. They would not come home until the sun had completely disappeared from the sky. At home, Min Lee washed her face and hands and feet, and even though all the water in the basin turned brown, she still felt like she was covered in mud. Her arms and legs were so tired that she felt like an old crab was crawling on rocks. And she looked down as she looked down at herself reflected in the dark water, she saw Ma's frown on her face. Ma is right, Min Lee thought. What a poor fortune we have. Every day, Ba and Ma work and work, and we still have nothing. I wish I could change our fortune. At that very moment, Min Lee heard a faint murmuring sound that she had never heard before, like a song chanted from the clouds. Curious, she opened the door to see what the noise was. And there, on the road in front of her house, she saw a small stranger calling out quietly, Goldfish, he was saying softly, as if he were coaxing his fish to swim. Bring fortune into your home. Min Lee and the villagers stared as he wheeled his cart. Even though the village was by a river, it had been many years since anyone had seen a glimpse of a goldfish. The fish in the Jade River were brown and gray, like the village. The goldfish man's cart was full of bowls of flashing fish that glittered like jewels. His gentle calling drew Min Lee to him like a moth to a lit lantern. How does a goldfish bring fortune into your home? Min Lee asked. The goldfish man looked at her. The sun setting behind him made him glow bright red and yellow. Don't you know? he asked her. Goldfish means plenty of gold. Having a bowl of goldfish means your house will be full of gold and jade. As Min Lee stared into his bowls with her shining black eyes, a brilliant orange fish stared back at her with its shining black eyes. And then quickly, so quickly that Min Lee barely thought about it, she turned into the house and grabbed the two copper coins from the white rabbit rice bowl. I'll buy that one, Min Lee said, and she pointed at the fiery orange fish with the black eyes and fin that had caught her eye. The other village children looked at her enviously while they, while the watching adults shook their heads. Min Lee, one neighbor said, don't believe his impossible talk. A goldfish won't bring fortune. Save your money. But Min Lee was not discouraged, and she held out her copper coins to the goldfish man. He looked at her and smiled. Then he took one coin, picked up the fishbowl, and gave it to her. May it bring great fortune, he said, and with a small bow to the villagers, he wheeled out of the village. 
In moments, he disappeared from view into the shadow of Fruitless Mountain, and if it wasn't for the goldfish Minley had in her hands, all would have thought he was a dream.